safety is foremost on your mind. So you're constantly uh, trying to prepare yourself for, for the cold. You, you never let yourself get too cold. Um, the isolation isn't too bad, or I didn't find it too bad, because it, you know it's just for one year and then you've got the rest of your life after that. But uh, you, you do crave the occasional conversation with family and things. Um, I, uh, I, I think by the end of the year I was, I was quite ratty. I might have been harder to live with because I was a little bit fixed in what I had to do and I, because I'd found the work a, a bit um, stressful just for handling with the birds all the time. I, I think it was good for me to get out and to come back to Australia, although at the time I would have been more than happy to have stayed on for another year. Uh, just the, the environment is so inspiring. I felt that I could have been relaxed, a bit more relaxed in the second year, uh, enjoyed the, the scenery. The, the, for a period through winter there, you had 24 hours of sunset, so you've got pink skies as the sun spirals around just below the horizon. Uh, the moments when you could sit back and, and feel the magic of the place were the best and I felt if I could stay on for another year, uh, I could have experienced that more. It's interesting to come back to civilization then or Australia and when you've been used to walking through penguins and you're very aware that penguin's over there, if I move here too fast he'll move, that penguin's there, I want to get to this penguin that has the satellite tracking device, I need to get back and very carefully shift around the penguins to make your way to it. That really alters how you behave when you enter a pub on a Friday night back in civilization because you enter there and some people turn around and see you and you immediately register them and, and you know that there are people there and you, you feel you want to make your way through carefully and get your back up against a wall and get used to where everybody is in the place and then sneak around. Um, you feel a little bit special when you come back from a trip to Antarctic, from Antarctica as well. You feel as if a little bit more important because you've been a, 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 a big fish in a little pond and then you come back to Australia and you, you're just one of many people but you feel as if my brain's different to them because I've, I've spent this fantastic year in semi-isolation. Mm. I, it's, it's, I guess it's something that not a lot of people get to experience and especially in such extreme conditions. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 I guess you could equate it to to some drillers in drilling camps. It, it, it can be a similar lifestyle to that, or fishermen on boats where, where you're isolated a long time from those that you love. But um, it, it comes with a spectacular environment. And I, I think um, it certainly is, you, you can't fly back home, for example, if you get tired of it halfway through the year. So you, you, you are physically isolated there for the whole year. There's no, I'm tired of this, I'll chuck the job in, I'll come home. Um, yeah, it, it's a very unique lifestyle and I'm sure every person who's come back from spending a winter in Antarctica is touched and changed by it. 